Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this video, I'm going to talk about five things all beginners should know about After Effects. If I could jump in a time machine and tell myself when I was first starting off in After Effects these techniques, I totally would do it. Now, if you already know these techniques, be sure to drop a comment down below and let me know so when I do travel back in time and tell my past self all these techniques that you know, I can know how terrible I am at After Effects and feel bad about it. So there's no doubt in my mind that everyone tries to center objects inside of After Effects. I mean, pretty much any app application you want to center maybe your titles or a specific object in the center of your comp and you do it by moving it around until you feel confident in that position now if you're doing this way I will say have you guys heard of this little thing called the align tab well for me it was never easy to find because it was never there you had to go up to window align and even in the workspace if you have it set the standard you don't even see the align tab so you have to physically you know, bring up the align tab, which is right over here on the right, if you're using the all panels layout, but you can come here, you know, if your title's not centered, you can click on the center horizontal tabs and it'll center your text or object right in the middle of your composition. Now, I do these in pretty much every one of my tutorials, so if you're an existing subscriber, you probably already know this. However, this is probably one of the most underrated menus in After Effects. You can, you know, select multiple layers here. I can right align these, and then I can also you know, move these down a little bit so nice and aligned or left align them, you know, center align them. It's all really cool. This tab is a very powerful and it's awesome. And even what we can do is turn on snapping right here at the top. And if I grab, say, my bottom layer here, you can see that as I center these up to each other, we have a straight line because it's snapping into place. So also that helps you with aligning your objects very easily. All right, you created a title. It's very boring. You don't know what to do. Well, guess what? Just like Photoshop, there's layer styles. If you right click a layer here, you go to layer styles and look at this. You have all these beautiful layer styles that are not effects, but they're built in layer styles separately. So, you know, we can come here and do bevel and emboss, which is going to bevel it out a little bit. We have all these parameters in here that we can, you know, make this a little bit more three dimensional. We can also add other layer styles if we continue to right click on this and maybe we do like a little drop shadow. You see how that's starting to stand out a little bit and we can continue to add more layer styles as we see fit a nice gradient overlay and within a few minutes worth of work you can take a boring 2d layer to something that's a little bit more you know has a little bit more character in it and of course you can apply those to the other styles as well and create something kind of unique and it's just really cool that you can just have these layer styles just like photoshop and you can use this inside of after effects the same exact way if you're not using the text tab to animate and you go here to the animate tab and you have all these parameters in here if you're not using this you're really missing out on animating text so so what i mean by that is i can come here to animate animate the scale bring it down to zero percent probably like what i can't see that well go here come here to the range selector add a keyframe for the start move forward to however long you want the animation and look at that i now have something a little bit better a little bit more advanced than a scale animation in the transform menu which would animate the entire thing and also what's cool i come here it's like hey you know what? I want to add a little bit of rotation to that. Just rotate it by a touch. What can go wrong? Look at that. Boom. If you're not using this tab, you're really missing out. And also you have all these other menus in here. And I could spend a lot of time working on this, as you can see. And here's an example. I can animate my text however I want and then continue to animate it with an extra, you know, animation as well. So, all right. On the topic of animation, we have a blob of text here. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. But if you're not looking at the graph editor, and this might be something that's obvious to people, the graph editor... I highly advise people to use a graph editor. It might be very simple to just use keyframes and you might be like, hey, you know what? If I want to control the animation of this, I might just make them easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on my keyboard and it speeds up the beginning and then it kind of slows down towards the end. And you, you know, it doesn't look great for this type of thing. So the graph editor is very handy and it's not something you should be afraid of, right? So you come here, you grab your, you know, your keyframes, the parameter that your keyframes are on. You can grab a keyframe and you can, you have handle control, which is extremely awesome. Then you can grab, like, say, the pen tool here at the top. You can add another keyframe in here. And you can manipulate, you know, the speed and how everything's going to take place. So, and now within a couple of seconds, I've been able to variate this animation instead of just being going, going completely one speed the entire time. And now it's just like, you know, it's very more interesting, you know. It's like, hey, why is that doing that? So, and I highly advise beginners to take a look at the graph editor and get a jump on it. 
as soon as possible because you will be using this as a professional motion graphics artist. So the last thing up on my list is using vector objects inside of After Effects. And I am recycling old tutorial content here. Of course, you can watch this video, links in the video description. I'm very lazy, so that's why I'm not re-recording this because I've done it more than a few times on this channel. Simply, if you're working with objects, if you have like, you know, graphics, what you can do, especially with Illustrator files, is you can group them into layers into, you know, inside of Illustrator, bring them to After Effects as shape layers, you have the same exact vector geometry and after effects that you can manipulate just like you could inside of Illustrator. So this gives you a lot of control over individual you know, animation. You can you know, animate very specific parts of a, you know, a vector layer and it really gives you the ultimate controls as if Illustrator just became after effects. So if you're doing, if you're into like that, you know, cartoon animation or you know, traditional animation that requires, you know, Illustrator, guess what? you are now in luck because After Effects and Illustrator talk together and it's been like that for a very long time. So, you know, it's not like it just happened yesterday. So I highly suggest if you're into that animation, learn a little bit about Adobe Illustrator. It will help you a lot inside of After Effects and really help you in your workflow. All right, those are the five things I think beginners should know about After Effects. Now that I've given a little bit of wisdom while wearing a robe, I can now drink poison like Socrates. I mean, it's so hard for me to make a joke. Anyway, we do plenty of After Effects tutorials on this channel, so if you're just starting off or you've been using After Effects a long time, or if you're already subscribed, come on guys, there's a lot of tutorials on this channel. You can go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We post two times a week on this channel as long as I'm not lazy. You can go ahead and drop a like if you did enjoy the video. Hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always be creating.